In this video, we're going to talk about equivalence, relations, and partitions. So we begin with the definition that twiddle is an equivalence relation on set S if the following three conditions hold. And just to be clear what we mean, if A and B are elements of S, we say A twiddles B. And so this relation twiddle is an equivalence relation if and only if the following three conditions hold. So the first condition is that twiddle is reflexive. And by this we mean A twiddles itself. The second condition is that twiddle is symmetric. By this we mean A twiddles B implies B twiddles A. And the last condition is transitivity. And this condition says that A twiddles B and B twiddles C implies that A twiddles C. So if those three conditions hold on a relation, we have an equivalence relation. And what's really great about equivalence relations is that they actually carve up our set into equivalence classes. So equivalence relations carve up, or rather uh, partition, S, our set, into equivalence classes. So let's take a look at a picture to see what's going on here. If we imagine a set S, some big set here, that set S, and our equivalence relation here uh, carves up S into various equivalence classes. So we can imagine all these partitions, or a partition that uh, partitions a set. And so in this example, we have one, two, three, four, five equivalence classes. And let's take a look. Uh, suppose there's element A. All of the elements in that piece are in the equivalence class of A. In other words, all of the elements in here twiddle with A. Okay, so from here let's take a look at a particular example. We're going to take a look at the integers. And we're going to define a relation on the integers. So define twiddle on the set of integers. I'm using the bold face Z to represent integers, uh, such that A twiddles B if and only if N divides A minus B, where N is some fixed integer. So as a, an explicit example here, let's take a look at uh, when N equals 5. We can say that uh, 13 twiddles 3 because 5 divides 13 minus 3. Uh, similarly, we have things like 13 uh, twiddles 3, twiddles 8 for the same reasoning. Okay, so we want to check now that this relation we've just defined is in fact an equivalence relation. So let's check that uh, this is an equivalence relation. So you may want to pause the video at this point and check for yourself and see if you can prove that this is an equivalence relation. Okay, well, let's go through the proof. The first thing we need to check is it reflexive. So we need to check if A twiddles A. And I'll put a question mark there. Uh, well, let's check. N, does N divide A minus A? In other words, does N divide 0? 
And the answer is yes, this is true, so we can uh, get rid of our question mark here. It certainly is true. Let's take a look at the next property, which is uh, checking whether this relation is symmetric. So in other words, we want to ask ourselves, does A twiddle B imply that B twiddles A? And let's put a question mark here. We want to investigate this. Well, uh, let's check. If N divides A minus B, well, that certainly implies that N divides B minus A. So that also checks. So let's get rid of our uh, question mark. So put a check mark here. We've verified that property. And lastly, uh, let's take a look at the transitivity property. So if A twiddles B and B twiddles C, does that imply that A twiddles C? And again, I'm going to put a question mark here. We need to verify this. So let's come down here at the bottom so we have some more space. Um, if n divides a minus b and n divides b minus c, then certainly n divides their sum a minus b plus b minus c. And that is the same thing as saying that n divides a minus c. Just performing some algebra here, the b's cancel out. And so we have verified the claim. So I'll remove the question mark. And we have shown that this is an equivalence relation. So our next question might be, well, if this is an equivalence relation, what are the equivalence classes? And how does this actually partition our set? So let's take a look at that. Uh, I'm going to draw a little chart here, so you may want to uh, organize your work as follows. And I'm going to uh, make five uh, different uh, columns here. And let's take a look at uh, this for n equals 5. Now, for n equals 5, let's take a look at the types of uh, equivalence classes that we get. So before we said that you are in uh, an equivalence class, for example, 13 twiddles 3. In other words, those are in the same equivalence class. All right, well, let's start with writing down our integers. Now, we notice that 5 is in the same equivalence class as 0 because certainly n divides their difference. So we can put 5 here. Similarly, you can work out that 6 and 7 and 8, and you can keep on going. Uh, you can also go backwards here and, and go through the negative integers. A negative 1 would be here, a negative 2, negative 3, and so on. And you can actually work through the definition. Uh, again, n divides a minus b. That's what it means for them to be in the same equivalence class. Okay. Well, we can actually place any integers in any of the integers in one of these five categories. And so what we actually find is that these are the equivalence classes. For our relation defined above when n equals 5. And they're uh, given names when we want to talk about the equivalence class here. Uh, we can say that this is 0 bar, and that's the notation for the equivalence class of 0. And notice that 5 is also in there, so we could represent this uh, as well by 5 bar or a negative 5 bar. So the names for the equivalence classes are not unique. Um, we have a little bit of choice there, but by convention, we usually uh, use the integer 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so naming the rest of our equivalence classes, here's 1 bar, uh, here's 2 bar, the equivalence class of 2, equivalence class of 3, and the equivalence class of 4. 
In the next video, we will take a look at some properties of arithmetic modulo n.